When you look at the incredible landscape on planet Earth, all the different terrains, the varying soil conditions, the awesome water features, oceans, lakes, rivers, streams, the waterfalls, the different climates, the huge amounts of plants and ground covers, the requirements are so varied. Can one fathom how big a project that was? When God designed the landscape project for planet Earth, he was so genius, he designed it in such a way he would never have to show up to work. I'll never forget as long as I live. It was August 1979. You know, it was a great year to build a house. It didn't rain all summer, but boy, in August, all this grass is totally dead. The road coming in was all dust. I'm looking at that and saying, God, how am I going to grow fruits without water? And it was so incredible. I hear inside, he says, well, you're looking at the wrong thing. Turn around, look at your trees. And I pushed enough out when I built the house that I knew they had shallow roots. And I says, you know, God, you really have my attention. If you can show me how you do these without irrigation, I can do an orchard. So I went out to the woods of the fork and I started moving this material underneath the trees and I was totally amazed. And I'm down to my elbow in this beautiful black compost. I said, there's something wrong with this picture. I have been killing myself to get this in my garden. I don't have it. And I hear inside, well, it works in your garden the same way you didn't ask. I was so angry. I threw that door away and I started covering my garden with, with wood chips. And it's so amazing now, my little tools are rake. And it's just so easy and so simple, and the production is so superior to what I ever had. When I saw how easy and simple this was, I, I says, God, where did we lose it? How? Why are we doing this? And it was so interesting. He took me right back to Genesis in the beginning. And if you look at the in the, in the beginning, when Adam and Eve were in the garden, they had this beautiful, relaxing day in the garden. And every afternoon and evening, God would come down and walk with them through the garden. And I'm sure as he walked through the garden, he would just share with them things they saw in the garden that day about himself. Did you notice this? This is... My character. This is all about me, kind of thing. And I'm sure they just had this incredible time, totally relaxed, no stress, every day. But when man sinned, Scripture said things are going to change. And the wording is, by the sweat of your brow, you're going to raise food. Thistles and thorns and weeds are going to compete with you. And the next verse says, and man began to till the soil. You see, man never cultivated in the garden. He tended the garden. He never disturbed the ground. And when man got disconnected from God. He began to till the soil. The whole issue is so very simple. It's all about cover. Everywhere in nature where man has not been is either covered with needles and leaves or grasses, but the ground is covered. And the reason is because the ground is a living organism. And as all living organisms, such as ourselves, we have skin to protect us. The animals have fur, fish have scales, birds have feathers, and the soil is a living organism. And God has designed it and made it so it's always covered with something. When you take the cover off, it becomes vulnerable and it gets lost. This is the thing that amazes me about us as intelligent human beings, how we don't see it because we've been experiencing it for thousands of years in a negative way. We're all around us, all through creation. Everything's just growing beautifully with no work. I found that if I try to help nature at any level, I mess it up. My approach now is just to look what it does and it says, talk to me, show me what you're doing because I want to copy it. Basically what soil needs to survive is the same as this. It needs air. It needs water, it needs food. It's a basic principle for all life. And so when you take mulch, for example, which is true in the forest, because there's not just one grade, like someone didn't go through and sift it and it wasn't always all coarse material or it wasn't all fine material, there's all what they have like macro pores. So there's all these different air pockets through the soil. And so what that does is it keeps the top part of the soil and even further down oxygenated. The microbes and the earthworms come up into the soil and then they can, they can actually deal with that material and break it down. It has to have different sizes of actual material. You have to have small grades, you gotta have things like needles, you gotta have things like chips. You can't have just one standardized size and expect that to do the same. There's probably, I don't know how many different sizes of chips all the way down to what the finished product is and which is soil for now if i took and i multiply this by a couple hundred times and that's what i was using it would break down but it would take a lot longer and the ability right away for it to help out um, diminishes a true healthy soil is not compacted and when it does get compacted it loses the oxygen like those macro pores we were talking about 
and you get an area where it becomes what they call anaerobic, which means the oxygen level is too low for the microorganisms to live. Whatever organic, natural thing you have at your disposal, it will work. And I've used everything from straw, grass clippings, leaves, animal manures, rocks. But having used them all, I come back to wood chips and I see where it's been for a while and what it's done. It is my favorite. It's just is the nicest, nicest thing to use. When I say which I'm referring to, to branches that have been chipped, branches of the trees, which is about 90% needles and leaves that have gone through a chipper or a tub grinder. You want to go to the, get it from the source. If you live in an area where you have local tree services, people that are trimming trees or taking them down, I would just get in the phone book and look for those kind of people and, and um, that would be a great source. There's two words I want you to think about when you come here. Sustainable permaculture. These leaves are falling down, and the idea is they're doing, they're feeding the soil back. They're going to drop these leaves that still have nutrients. They drop down in, and they're feeding that soil, and they're mulching it by their own. And if we go over here, or we go out in the fort, they're doing the same thing. So, I mean, they've been developed over these eons to do it. And when you go out, someone might say, well, that's not true with grasses. You go out into the grass field, there, there was grasses that were over my head, but underneath it was mulch from the grass. You know what I mean? It wasn't just green living grass with nothing out. There was mulch that all those blades of grass that had broken down fed the grass. There's nobody that goes out there and fertilizes that. If there is no out, you're not taking it away, you know, it's all going back. The animals were eating the grass and it was still going back. So if you can recreate that in a garden, it's the same exact thing. The leaves come out, they do their purpose, they go back into the soil. Everything about God is free and sets free. And, and it's so beautifully just, you know, exemplified and shown in nature. This is just so freeing. And, and I love that scripture where he says, Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I'll give you rest. And Jesus says, I don't do things like you. Follow me around and learn from me. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And in this incredible environment, this thing that God has created, he shows his magnanimous, awesome, giving, generous nature. And it is so beautiful in comparison to the man approach, where conversely, anything that I do, if I don't stay right on it, maintain it, I lose it, you know, kind of thing. I'm a slave to it. You come to a place where you've got, you know, you've, you've gardened, and your garden at the end of the year is all hard again. So you bring in this really nice organic material, fertilize, you know, manures, as the year progresses, when you get to the end of the growing season, that ground is right back to where you started. It's all compacted and hard again. Because the air is always present, because it never compacts, it never has to be prepared. So I tilled in orange wood chips into my garden last spring, and um, I wasn't too successful. My soil test says that I'm way down in nitrogen. Because I tilled those wood chips in, I tied up all the nitrogen in my soil. But now I know you never till this stuff. You just add to it. Fertilization, because of the compost material, every time it rains or you water, compost tea is being deposited into the soil, so you have a constant input of fertilization going on. Every time I planted in the same row this year, each one was bigger and nicer than before, and I didn't fertilize. And he says, this compost is illustrating that quality of my character. It gives, and it gives. I love that scripture in this. It says, it says, do not despise the days of small beginnings. You know, and I just encourage you to be patient. Nothing happens of any value quickly. Things that are of value take time. So, you know, if you don't expect miracles at first, because it's just, it's going to take a little bit of time. And as you plant things and you feel they're not doing as well as you'd like, then you can use fertilizers to supplement. Eventually you won't have to, but initially you might, and that's okay. But as, as it goes, you'll find that you won't need to use those fertilizers. And I always go to that scripture where God says, it's good for a man to bear the yoke in his youth. God's saying up front, if you're going to have anything of value, you've got to work for it. But he says, if you, if you do it the right way, you want to do it early on, do the work up front. And if you've done it right, over time, it'll produce for you. And each time I put a, a layer on, it's a lot longer before I have to do it again because I have this incredible base built. And so like you have a foundation that's just growing and you know, getting you know, better and better. So over time, you're getting a higher and higher yield with less and less input. Organic matter is wonderful. It's a, it holds the moisture up there. It's like a sponge. It just holds it there and it just sits there. It's got plenty of minerals, plenty of nutrients. Uh, lots of nitrogen and all that sort of thing. All this stuff, I mean, the soil completely is over the top as far as, you know, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. 
So it is here now in the summertime when I'm planting the seeds out in my garden because it's dry on top. I'll water initially to get them up. And you see how it's damp down in here? So these, these tomatoes have never been watered. This is what I get so blessed by. Look at this. Look, look how damp this is. And this is August. And it's going to stay this way. It will never dry out. And this is why I don't have to water. You ever, you ever go along riverbeds or stream beds, you see the plants alongside the trees are just huge and lush and just gorgeous. And that's the ideal way to water is to have sub-irrigation water coming up underneath. Um, in, the, in nature, you know, the ground it maintains and holds that water so it's always there. Watering from the top is so counterproductive in a garden situation because that's just, you know, not as effective as you know, sub-irrigation sub or, or material that holds water. The rainwater is a superior water. And if you've ever done a garden, you see after it rains, everything just grows great. Nothing like when you water. You'll find with wood chips, the incredible advantage is there's no sponge that'll hold water like wood chips. I'm amazed at the water it holds. And when you walk in the woods, the forest, there's no water to your feet. It's not soggy. And it's amazing, those wood chips totally absorb that kind of water quantity. And another thing that's amazing about wood chips is when there's not enough, like it's, it's like, it's now if you look at my grass out in the front, it's all brown, but in the wood chips in my orchard, it maintains the moisture. And here's the incredible thing about God and his design. When there's too much water, the wood chips displace it. And when there's not enough, it retains it. When the rain's hitting it, it's stopping right there. It's slowly working into the soil. The microbes and everything, the bacteria, the earthworms, everything that's living under that is protected. And then they are slowly decomposing that mulch down into the soil, which is the food for the plants. In this environment where there's so much air in the ground and so, so porous, the roots just spread everywhere. You could have, you know, heavy clay ground, which is what I have here, and I could be watering all day long. And it's not going to go in the plant because the ground's so compacted, there's no root system. But in this stuff, because the ground is so porous, I don't need the water at all because the roots are everywhere. And the weed seeds blows in on top of these dry wood chips on the top, they can't germinate. And the other nice feature is when you go to pick vegetables, it's not muddy, it's not got dirt all over it. When I used to till this, it was just solid weeds. It blows my mind because it's just like, this was the same space. Move the wood chips out of the way. Did not plant in the wood chips. Plant in the mushroom soil that had the nutrients. When you plant in the soil and they get big enough, then you side dress them with the wood chips. God does display himself in nature. Consider the birds of the field. It's, you know, how they don't toil, they don't sweat, and I provide for them. Are you not of more value than them? Dumb um, statement of Jesus, come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, I'll give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and come learn of me. My yoke is easy, my burden's light. And I find that if I'm doing something that's stressing me out and getting a lot of work, I realize this is not God. Well, God is a, the ultimate artist. He's the, the, the master artist. And he's very proud of his artwork. And I find when I ask him questions about nature, he's just is right there. Yeah, and let me tell you this, and let me show you this. It's like, it's just awesome. And the, and the creation and the word are saying the same thing. They're revealing the, the beautiful nature of God and showing his handiwork. And they're totally synonymous. And I love it because whenever I'm, I'm hearing from him, the Holy Spirit always brings scripture that verifies and, and validates what he's saying. And I know it's, I know who I'm hearing from. Ever wonder why you're working? Ever tired of researching? Oh, there's gotta be a better way. So you lift your hands up and pray Father, can you hear me? I'm listening to you now I'm ready to trust you To lead and guide me somehow The creator of the universe concerned with me
Help me to lean on you the rest of my life to eat and eat and eat and eat and is the place of freedom.